I told you yesterday I like to have about five rows of rock. So the five rows is more important than the width of the structure this way. I'm just guessing, okay? It's about five rows of rocks is usually about four feet. So I usually like to have this flat to about here and then these rocks on this side be a little higher than the bottom row. So on both sides. The, the reason for the apron is when the water falls over this layer of rock, it splashes down and it will dig a hole. Okay, this is down to a, a rocky layer that's, or it would be deeper than it is now. But just to demonstrate the proper way to do this, we'll do the apron. So what we do is we carve out a notch here, maybe the width of these rocks and oh, four or five inches deep so that when we lay the apron rocks in, the top of the apron rock is level with the existing stream bed elevation. You build a structure in and around the rabbit brush, uh, it's going to say thanks for the drink and it's going to become more vigorous. If it becomes more vigorous, then it's got more woody material to catch the sediment, so it helps in the restoration and it works really well with willows. Willows that are struggling to make it in a marginal habitat will really respond to the structure. So now we're going to make at least five rows of rocks. It'll probably come back to about where that line is. Okay, rocks have three dimensions. The normal tendency is to lay them flat like that. We want this to be pretty much a uniform height all the way across here. So that means twist the rock around to get the, the right dimensions you need to have to be level with the next row of rocks. So when we do that, we, if we're st stacking them with a narrow dimension down uh, for height, we call that book stacking. So it just, uh, and once you have other rocks around them, they don't have to be flat in order to be stable because the other rocks are holding them in place, okay? Of uh, the smallest rocks on this upstream edge, we speed up the collection of sediment and hold moisture longer. So, got one, two, three, four, four rows of rocks now. We only need about one more to meet the criterion. And then we still got all the little rock buffer to put on the upstream side. So we're approaching uh, completion on this one. So we need about one, maybe two rows of rocks the rest of the way across. The question was about that uh, sagebrush, what to do there. And I would do as you're doing, lift that brush up and get the rocks back as tight against the woody part of that sagebrush as possible. Okay. The, Main reason for making it this wide is so that when we add the next layer someday, if we are so inclined, when the water, the new structure will go from the middle of this one and overlap on the sediments that are going to be deposited here, okay? When this is full of sediment and we got grass and stuff growing here where I'm standing, then we'll start a new layer and the bottom row of rocks will be where I'm standing and the top row will be here someplace. So we've raised it one, one level, okay? And when we raise it one level, that means it'll not only go this way, it'll be wider. So the upstream at the up bank edge of the next one will probably be where I'm standing. So we could add a third layer and then the next one would be up here. And by that time, we're pretty, we're starting to approach the floodplain elevation. And I've added as many as three rows to quite a, quite a few projects. I don't see the need to go higher than that. I would rather spend the same amount of effort going and fixing the next gully. So what we did when we built this one, we first cut a trench and installed the footer rocks, that's key. Then we laid the rock, the first row of rocks so it overlaps the footer rocks so that the water will splash onto the footers. 
and not dig a, a scar hole. And then we try to keep the surface as level, relatively level as possible as we work upstream, okay? And the most important thing would be to have, not to do would be to have a rock this size right here in the middle somewhere because that narrows the channel and it forces the water to go around and increases the erosive force on the downstream edge when it gets there. So that's a critical thing to watch out for. And then uh, what we're going to see happening is this shrubbery will respond to the additional moisture.